guys, it's Philip, and I'm coming back to you in the garage. And today I wanted to discuss a topic that I think is pretty important when you want to start a home gym. It is what um, you need to know before you start a home gym, just things that don't occur to you until after you've experienced them. Now there are three things that I wish I knew before starting a home gym, just things that I had to learn the hard way and just through making mistakes and having to fix them and um, just find better solutions for them. And that is number one, that your garage floor has a slight gradient as it heads towards the door. Number two, that your garage is exposed to the elements, uh, more to come on that. And number three, that lifting in your, your garage is really just a different environment than going to an actual um, gym facility and lifting around the public. So number one being that your garage floor has a slight gradient. Now, when I first started a home gym, I researched um, this fact quite a bit to see if it actually made a difference and if it was substantial enough to worry about when actually orienting my equipment. And through my research online, um, I came to the conclusion that it didn't really matter that much just based on other people's experiences. But through my own firsthand experience, I found out that it definitely does make a difference. And that's through doing multiple workouts where I was bench pressing, doing pull-ups, um, deadlifting, all with my rack oriented like this. Now, when I benched, I noticed that my left arm was giving out uh, quite a bit sooner than my right arm, that I was really having to torque my body to get it up, you know, just the classic um, compensatory mechanism that you use when a uh, bench press gets heavy. And after um, just experiencing it enough times, I began to notice that my actual left shoulder blade that I had attempted to pack in and down on my bench was floating and that I was getting no support on my left side. In addition, pull-ups felt a little strange. It felt like I was going up unevenly. And when I attempted to deadlift with this orientation, um, it just felt like the bar was being pulled slightly to the left um, as I did my reps. And so overall, um, through my short amount of time training that way, I definitely came to the conclusion that it does make a difference. Now there are multiple ways that you can address the issue of the gradient in your garage. Number one, which is what I did, is to just rotate your equipment 90 degrees so that you're facing front to back instead of side to side. Um, with this orientation and the gradient that is in your garage, you are going to be either lifting at a slight incline or a slight decline. Now, if that really bothers you, then you can move on to solution number two, which is to actually build a level platform. And I'm not going to go into this one in too much detail because I haven't done it personally. Um, and I don't really know the specifics of it, but I do know that there are multiple guides um, on YouTube and really anywhere online um, that you can reference when attempting to build more of a level platform. Um, and I know a really popular one is with using actual woofing shingles um, to shim the platform to the um, desired thickness in each part to achieve an actual flat surface. Now number two in the list of things that I wish I would have known before starting um, a home gym is the fact that your garage is exposed to the elements. Now, a lot of people, when they say that about garage gyms, are talking about the hot and cold, which for your specific climate, you can make the judgment call on, you know, if you need uh, cooling, heating, just depending on where you are. Where I'm at in Tennessee, it gets relatively cold, typically down into the upper 20s, and it gets pretty hot in um, really into the upper 90s, um, typically is what we'll see on any given year. And so for my climate control, I have simply got one doctor heater that I will put a picture of up right now. And I have an industrial grade fan that I will also put a picture of up. 
And these uh, two climate control devices do a great job of keeping me warm or cool. I would recommend them um, as solutions to anybody that is looking for either aspect of heating and cooling. And I also wanted to um, expand on the exposed to the elements fact uh, by mentioning that garage gyms can get dirty very quickly. Now, this isn't something that I had a great grasp on when I first started my garage gym. I have quite a few stall mats in here as um, is very popular in home gyms. And I can tell you that I cannot keep them completely clean for the life of me. If you are trying to start a home gym and you're worried about there being some dirt and grass and debris in your gym um, at any given moment, just know it's going to be a fact of life. It is something you can't avoid. So just go ahead and make your peace with it before you start your home gym. Now what I did, as has been recommended by people in the home gym community, was buy a blower. This makes it a lot easier to clean the debris out um, of your garage. It makes it much quicker and simpler, and you can really get it clean just really in a matter of a minute or two. Now, pro tip, don't make the mistake that I made and get a blower that is corded. Go ahead and spring for a cordless blower. You will thank me later. It's so much more convenient and I dread using the blower in my garage because I know that I'm going to have to get an extension cord out. So just go ahead, uh, spring for the cordless blower and you'll be very happy that you did. Now the third aspect of your gym being exposed to the elements is the fact that you are going to encounter um, wildlife every once in a while. When I started my home gym, I noticed that I had a little field mouse that liked to hang out in my garage. He would be out there every time I would come um, into the garage and he would run out through a little space by my garage door um, where the concrete is actually busted out. I affectionately nicknamed him Jerry. In addition to Jerry, I have had bugs in here. I had a workout where I had a fly on me at any given second for the entire workout. And I have a buddy with a home gym who has um, salamanders that frequent his spot and cheer him on when he's going for heavy reps. Now the third aspect of a home gym that I wish I knew uh, before I started it was a home gym vibe is way different than a Globo gym vibe or just a, a gym where you get to interact with other people in the public. When you are in a public gym, there can be a lot of annoyances. You can have um, the old guys that are reading a book on the quad curl. You can have the bros that are taking up a bench station or a squat rack for prolonged periods of time. Or you can have somebody who is just making weird noises, doing weird exercises in front of an entire section of the gym. Those are pretty annoying, but you don't think about the fact that you are um, really uh, just interacting with a lot of people. If you're anything like me, you over the years of working out in a public gym um, really built a close circle of friends that had like interests um, to you and were also dedicated to working out that you really just enjoyed seeing every day. And I would say that is the biggest um, thing that I regret about going to a public gym all the time. Now I do currently have a cheap gym membership so that I can do um, cardio and go work out with friends when they want to, but I'm not in there nearly as much as I used to be and I don't see those buddies as much as I used to. And so that is probably the biggest thing that I um, would say takes some getting used to. If you're not an intrinsically motivated individual that enjoys exercising and working out just for the sake of exercising and working out, then a home gym is likely not going to work for you. 
Now, these have been the three things that I wished I would have known before I started a home gym. If you have any other things that you had to learn the hard way, just share them down in the comments below, and I would love to read about those. Um, they're probably things that I forgot to mention in this video, but I would just love to hear from you guys. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I'll see you later.